Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. So today what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the 10th. Um, we're gonna check out issue zero and issue one. Um, mainly the focus is on issue one, but um, since there was an issue zero, I decided to read it. Normally though, I will say this, most zero issues come out kind of posthumously. So generally speaking, it's not like you get a zero issue and then one comes out. So anyway, but um, I, I read both of them. I thought the book was excellent. I have to be honest. It's probably one of the best uh, image books that I've read over the last couple of weeks. So you can look back on my videos and see what I've done so far. But I think in terms of like a number one issue, the characters, the, the story, the setup and stuff like that, he really did an excellent job. I'm very, very impressed by what he did for, for like what I would consider a popcorn, you know, classic image style book. It's, it's really good and it's a great setup. I, I definitely like the characters, very interested to read more. He's got awesome villains and, um, all right, let's, let's take a look at zero and issue one and do it. Enough kissing Tony's ass. No, <laughs> I worked with Tony for a short amount of time and, um, I, I consider him a friend. He's a very, very nice guy. He's like a hard worker, too. Guy writes pencils and inks himself all the time and uh, is real good. So the cover, you know, it's it, like Pitt-like looking character. Um, pretty interesting premise for um, how he gets big, uh, you know, how he was created and stuff like that. So he's not just what I would consider only like a Pitt um, inspired character and, and these characters look a little bit like is is now this book came out in 97 so you figure at this point image comics has been around for about five years so this is not um you know a launch title for image and i would assume most of the people that are watching this video are are fans of tony's work and stuff like that so anyway what we have here is tony daniel creator and artist he created this title in fact he said in 1984 so he must have been like a teenager or something when he did it. Um, Bo Smith um, was the developer and writer. Oh, okay, so Bo Smith wrote it. Interesting. I'll have to keep an eye on that for the first issue. I don't know if it's just this Zero issue. I don't remember. We'll see. Anyway, Marlo Alcuieza inks. Paul Mounts um, and Bongo Tone did the colors and seps. Kaleographic letters. And um, Bahare Harandi is the editor it's interesting, too. I think that there's a character in the book with that name. Hmm. Fascinating. All right, let's continue, friends. All right, so first page. We've got what looks to be the Izzes. They're charging over like a cliff. And then we've got this monster mouth. Um, essentially, this is sort of like um, like like a... What do you call it? Like a, an analogy for blood. Like blood cells. And, and blood rushes into 10, we'll call him number 10, the decimator. Uh, and that's what creates his size. But there's also other implications when he doesn't have blood or if he loses blood. So you can kind of point and figure out what that is. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> Springdale. Springdale is a town that was created by a bad guy. And there's basically two types of people that live in Springdale. We'll get into that in a bit. But anyway... They're, this is in Colorado. They're standing on a cliff. It was a little confusing to me because I was like, so when these bad guys show up, like trees form, because um, you'll see in a second. It's like a little weird. And then and we, we have this character here, which we'll, we'll meet her in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm like almost over my cold, but there's like a little bit of remaining. I thought this was a pretty fun show. Yeah, so see, this character's name is Miss Maraha. So I wonder if... Um, Bahare. I wonder if that's um like Tony's like someone that Tony knows um that edited the book and then it was also named um, a character. But anyway, you can see the tree branches. It was a little confusing at first because they're right on a city, and so I thought, well, maybe like there's a portal when these characters show up, like kind of they bring their world into like the real world. But this is this town or city sits basically in the middle of Colorado. So this is really kind of more like a hilltop that's outside the city of what we're seeing. But anyway, we've got all these um, characters charging in. They're going to attack the city. And then we've got um, the 10th, uh, we'll say, uh, here. And uh, he was created for this moment. So... 
the zero issue is okay. First issue is is actually I think better. But anyway, so these guys are kind of monitoring what's going on, and um, essentially a third hacker has broken in to controlling the tenth, and um, Miss Bahare is uh, pissed obviously, and she wants to wants them to locate where this third infiltrating party is located and obviously stop it so anyway he's up here he starts to hesitate he falls behind the others um you know they're controlling him so they believe that there's got to be some sort of malfunction with this test that they're running um they try to scramble it and this all this it's nice you know like like again it's a solid zero issue a lot of times zero issues aren't that good to be honest um you know, I've I've read plenty of it, or they're like the art isn't as good as the normal thing. The story is kind of like, eh. so anyway. But this is someone that we're gonna meet later. So I don't. Even, she's not even really in the first issue, but I think that um, her last name is Fine. I can't remember her first name, but I'm pretty sure this is one of the girl's moms that we're gonna meet in a little bit. But um, anyway, so she's <clears throat> trying to tap into the tenth and control him. Uh, let's see. He's referencing a character named Dark, who you're going to meet in a little bit. And then we've got a big shot of the tenth in his face. He's crying a little bit. You turned me into a monster. Crack. And then we get the shot here. All right, so what we have here is, God, I can remember. Yes, I remember. Flooding my mind. So at some point, he was sort of like a mercenary or something like that. And he charges into, like, Dark's... Um, fortress or whatever you want to call it and um dark gets a hold of him does these experiments on him he says that he's not the only one this is a character we're going to meet in another issue um crow kill i think is his name and he controls crows pretty awesome character actually i like the name a lot too um and uh memories or visions that don't make sense so we see this girl um little difficult to tell her age to be honest the way that tony draws she could be a teenager she could be an adult woman it is a little difficult i think you know for someone like me i've got a character blaster kid who i've i've kind of played with her age in my mind at different times originally i i wanted to make her young but every time i would draw her i would make her a little bit older and then i started realizing the the re the reality and the ramifications of having a character that's too young because if she's got physically demanding things that she needs to achieve how plausible is it to have like a 15 year old doing things that uh, adults would do you know what i mean so it's like i i nudged her age up to like 18 um 17 or 18 but anyway um all right so we've got these monsters all beckoning this way and all of a sudden they just are getting ripped apart left and right it's a little difficult i kind of had to go back to figure out what exactly weapon the 10th was using because they hadn't he hadn't really shown his weapons yet i think there's a, a slight you can kind of see him a little bit on he's got these huge sort of almost like boomerang like looking um we'll call them blades but i thought these were sword blades like i was like is this like a sword because they're getting all slashed apart and he's chopping them all up <clears throat> and then um did you find the third party yes they're within our own complex so that's a shocker third floor bio lab room 242 which is funny because it's a reference to the shining um I did. I did notice again. You know, I was. I've already been complimentary to towards Tony's writing, but he he definitely feels like someone who's watched a lot of movies and read a lot of comic books. And it's it's not not. I mean, obviously, when you're doing an image book and you're trying to capture the classic image comics feel, um, there's certain things that you would you would maybe do the the way the characters look or act or whatever. But um. Yeah, I think I think that that all is has added to Tony's ability to write, you know, because I think again, like I said, when we get into the first issue, I think it's a strong first first issue. I really do. Um, anyway, so um, we're too late. Whoever it was is gone. So whoever tapped into, um, hacked into the tenth is is already split. Um, we've lost mental and physical control on number ten. All right, so she's like, "What abort now? Trip the blood release." So tripping the blood release will will weaken him. So they've got some sort of precautionary things that they do. 
um, to hopefully control him. But anyway, here he is um, where you can really kind of get a good look at him with the blades that he carries. <clears throat> Not 100% sure of where those, where he hides those on his body if he wears them on his back shoulders. But anyway, we've got a big pile of all this stuff that he's killed. Um, his Restorator has been triggered. So he's got on his wrists uh, these things that let the blood pour out of him. Plasma release process has begun. DNL blood cell capacity is leveling at that of 100 men. Overload on plasma is at 25% and rising. Now, this was a tiny bit confusing to me because I guess I was under the impression, I almost thought that they were going to make him bigger because they're, they're, they're talking about um, leveling at that of 100 men. So so that's, I think, where he's at now. Now they're overloading. It's at 25% and rising. When they said rising, I assumed that maybe that was going to make him bigger, but I, I might be a little confused on what exactly. 75% of rising, 90% of rising, 100, uh, we have reached a coma state. So apparently when they increase the plasma in his blood, um, it knocks him out. So black spell, abort, search and destroy. Oh, black spell. Okay, that's interesting. So, Wow. Okay, because when I read this, I didn't know who Black Spell was, and I wasn't 100% sure what this is. Black Spell actually is going to interrogate her mom, who is, I believe, this the scientist that tapped into him. And this dude's really evil. We don't even really get to actually see him in issue one, but we get a little bit of a, a tease of him. Your orders are to retrieve and return number 10. So he's still on the mission. Um, and then we cut to these two girls, and these two girls are friends. I was trying to figure out if they were sisters or friends, but I think they're, they like live together in, in um, Spring Springfield or whatever it's called. Um, SB, what was that? Her name is Esperanza, uh, another of those monster dreams. And she's known to have um, like uh, magic powers. Uh -huh, she's had a real bad one. I don't understand, Zarina, what it all mean. What's it all mean per the cat is purring. Um, so kind of, I kind of chuckled when I saw this just because it was like, it felt a little out of place in the book, but Tony Tony goes for a little bit of like TNA throughout the book, so um, we'll see that in issue one too. It doesn't really bother me, and the, the girls are cute. So, all right, let's continue with issue number one now. So this is called the Abuse of Humanity. Da -na 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 -na. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to read a little bit more of this today, but I'm actually tripling down on videos today. So if you've made it this far. One good for you. You're a you're a a, a doer. But um, yeah, I, I actually I'm gonna be uploading three videos today. So I'm gonna do the Daredevil Kevin Smith. Stop, no fighting. Um, I'm gonna do Daredevil with um Kevin Smith and Joe Casada. Uh, I'm gonna do Young Blood, written by Alan Moore, and uh, this, and maybe even one more. I might do four. What do you think of that? So we got it. Here's the cover for the 10th number one. We'll even go into full screen mode and celebrate this. So it's funny is I definitely collected some of the issues of the 10th, but I'd never, ever seen this exact number one issue. So I don't know if there was a variant cover, which I kind of don't think that there was. There may have been. But anyway, but I apparently don't have the 10th number one um, from this series because I'd never, ever seen this cover before. But it's cool, you know. Again, I mean, I could see for, for people that are Pitt fans, you know, you might think that's um, Pitt. There's a couple of interesting things that Tony did in this book, um, too, that I'll point out in a little bit. But take a look at the logo and kind of soak it in, and you'll you'll notice something in a little bit. It was pretty clever. Pretty clever, I thought. So, all right. Let's go, friends. Friends of friends of friends. All right. So Bo Smith is the writer. So developer and writer. So he took Tony's basic premise and, and expanded on it. But this was kind of funny. They misspelled creator right here. I noticed that. Tony Daniels, the creator. Um, anyway. <laughs> Have to be an asshole and point it out, right? <laughs> so January 1997. Oh, my God. This was an interesting time in comics. Things were a changing and about to change actually quite a bit. All right, blood, like money, too much or too little will bring out the monster in us all. Plunk, plink, sorry. I actually just was saying plunk. 
I wasn't reading the word balloon, but ironically, they went with something very close to what I was thinking. All right. So anyway, we've got some blood and uh, whatever they call these things kind of running through this and they start to stop it. Um, and uh, we see that it's um, the tenth, like tied down and they're giving him blood. The beast begins to rise from within a surreal transformation of transposed DNA, a savagery quenched only by blood. Again, what did that guy say in the Spawn book? These, these, these superheroes, they're all vampires. The good ones and the bad ones. All right, so here, I'll point this out now. So he did something kind of fun with the panel borders here, which is he kind of did the Tenth's fangs. But if you look at the logo, it's the same thing. So it's kind of like the Tenth's teeth, which I thought was really cool. It's pretty clever. But yeah, it's like teeth. Tenth teeth. Go, Tony. Clever guy. I love this. This is really, really cool. I love the... Paul Mounts always is like his colors are very kind of rainbow like meaning that he will use like the full spectrum of colors on a page but it looks really cool I mean we've got literally red orange yellow green blues purples it's all <laughs> no color left behind is Paul Mounts's <laughs> theory apparently but anyway I really like this I like the black silhouettes here with the like warm light coming through these like these well, I don't know I won't call them windows but it looks really really cool uh, and, um, it's just a fun book. Bloody panel borders with teeth. It's good shit. <clears throat> All right. So, this is Taylor checking on disturbance from lab level IO as requested. Or 10, level 10, I think it is. Um, so these two guys are searching around to see what's up. They go in here. There's a disaster Taylor, this place has been ravaged. Either a bomb has gone off in here or our friend is on the loose. Their friend is on the loose. He's standing right behind him here. Um, he talks about hearing some heavy breathing, and then this dude attacks, and this is the 10th. And he's super hopped up on blood right now, so he's going to just turn them into mincemeat. All right, so now we're going to start to see the town of Springdale. I said Springfield, but I'm Springdale. So Springdale is a created community by the evil Dr. Raz's Dark, founder of the Dark Lawn Corporation, with his breakthroughs in radiation therapy and nuclear energy, promises a new hope for the sick, the cancer-ridden, the plagued. Tens of thousands overwhelm the waiting list in the hopes of working for Dr. Lion, or Dark, Dark Lawn, uh, or to a chance to live in Springdale. So it's, it's, a, it's a community that is basically under sort of police control with this evil dark one's own forces but you've got you know doctors and all the people that work at the medical facility their children and then people that are that want to be cured so it's pretty interesting i immediately thought that this was a great idea um just a, it's just fun it adds an element to the story where um not only do you have now like a crazy sort of pit like character on the loose We've been introduced to a couple of villains, um, but now we've got like a weird town that's kind of controlled by like a bad guy, and it's got like you know a little Twilight Zone sort of vibe or you know some other stuff. Anyway, so she shows up at her friend's house and she's knocking on the door, and you see a tomato flying into the scene. She gets hit in the head by a tomato, and these three hot bully girls um, are picking on her. So it says, "Oh, I'm so sorry, Esperanza. I hit you in the head." I was aiming at your eye, which I actually thought was a funny joke. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, so, you know, she's like, it hurt, da 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 da. They make references to, look out, girls, Sabrina the Teenage Witch might turn us all into pumpkins or frogs, and they kind of are making fun of her. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is she probably could do something along those lines. They don't know that yet. Not yet, they don't. All right, then her sexy friend is running through the house after a shower, the cat strategically covering her body, sort of. Anyway, she thinks she's bloody. She's not. It's just tomato. The cat eats a little tomato, doesn't like it, and uh, she's exhausted. She needs to lay down and rest, so she's going to lay down and rest. We get a very, very cool um, shot of the 10th. He's coming to Springdale to cause trouble but i think he's starting to no he hasn't been damaged yet um anyway um run faster they're hunting for you there are many 
their eyes are his eyes. So I'm not, I don't know who, I don't know if this is her dreaming this or if this is him thinking this or whose thoughts these are right here. But anyway, he, he's aware or she is aware that this guy is being hunted right now and he's going to be hunted by the crow kill guy. Um, and there's some information on Springdale and, um, talking about what perimeter of that he's in and um he's at ucm which is the colorado uh i think it was i saw it open can't remember what ucm stands for but anyway it's um i think the the town the threat of, or possible threats is subdued All right so now her friend zarina is that her name they say their names a lot. Anyway, this girl's like her boyfriend wants her to sneak out. They've put a cure. They put a curfew on the town. They've announced that that there's um, a possible threat coming to the town. They're not really sure what it is, and um, so the curfew's at seven. So her boyfriend Antonio is trying to get her to come over and watch uh, movies with her, um, and uh, she can't sneak out. Uh, and uh, he sent her a box of candy, and she's enjoying the candy. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And then um, she pulls a beeper out of her pocket. And the essentially what happened was she's, she had borrowed her jacket without telling her. And she left her beeper in it. But her mom has been paging her for hours uh, trying to probably alert her of what's going on. But she missed it. So uh, no luck getting in touch with her mom. And uh, Mr. Dark is now flying into... I don't know, Springdale or wherever he is right now. So these guys are like talking about it. Main base has given me the prelims on the escape, Mr. Dark. It seems that one of the monitor crew was a mole for the outside. So they're they're aware that that someone in their own organization is is who's been messing with the tenth. Uh and anyway, he makes an example of one of the guys and kills him with his sort of spiky skull cane thing. Don't underestimate the tenth because you're insulting his powers, his creation. So this is Mr. Dark Dark Lawn, whatever his name is. Mr. Dark we'll call him. Alright. So we've got the tenth. He's hiding in the swamps. He's like it's like a scene out of Apocalypse Now. Here he comes, but look who it is. Crow kill. Cover the sky with darkness, my children. Caw, caw. Seek out the one that has left the fold of our father. He must be brought back to the nest. He has done wrong. He must be punished for his deeds against the family. Because don't forget, there was more than one of these abominations created by Dark, Mr. Dark. So anyway, but the crow can see through their eyes. He may be blind. I didn't actually notice if he was or not. Um, no, but the, here he is. Sorry. Kill Crow. Sorry, I was calling him Crow Kill. Crocodile. <laughs> Kill Crow. All right. So anyway, he releases the hounds. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Nice little sequence here. They're driving through the forest trying to get to the mom's house. There's no lights on the street. They're saying how Dark Lawn um, tries to control every element of their lives. They even, she even, yeah, her name is Zarina, the other girl. They even revoked Esperanza's license because uh, they didn't want her to drive. So they know, I think they sense that she's powerful and they're kind of keeping an eye on her from a distance. But anyway, <clears throat> we see the tenth up here, up on the rocks in their car down here. Now we've got them still driving and complaining. The crows are flying in. He says more evil villain stuff. Hors d'oeuvres of the flesh. Get him! Get him! And they start chewing him up. So as he's losing blood, he loses size and power and uh, falls into the street where the girls nearly hit him with the car. And let's continue, buddies. All right. Oh, my God. Gets out of the way. He's got a little strategically wrapped up with ace bandages. They sort of skid out. Crows are still attacking him. So now, S SB, we'll say, the nickname that she was is called, uh, comes out and she actually starts to power up. And she's going to decimate all these crows here. It's pretty cool. So she blows all of her clothes off, which is cool, uh, and then just destroys all the crows. They're gone. 
she killed the crows. Oh my, what did I do? Well, you know what you did. You blew off all your clothes and killed the crows. So anyway, um, we've got the guy on the ground. He's all messed up. But remember, he doesn't look like a monster. So this so was a little tiny bit confusing. This is a man. It's not her. It almost looked like, because they say it's you. And I thought, I thought for a second, maybe she was looking at like herself and the wraps. Now that could be what it is, but, but, um, I think it's supposed to be a guy's face and they're both recognizing each other that she's seen him before and he's seen her before because they probably both, um, were experimented on in different ways. But anyway, that's my guess is that this is supposed to be a dude, but it does look like a woman. If I... If I cover her face, I guess it looks more like a guy. The lips are a little confusing for men's lips in, in comic book language. Anyway, so they pack him up and they throw him into the car of all things, which is a little weird. I mean, there's there's you know a crazy person on the loose or or a threat. Um, they're kind of you know they're they're not sure what it is, but I don't know if I'd be picking up dudes that are wrapped in bandages and covered in blood, but they did. So anyway, I guess they assume that the crows took all of his clothes but anyway they say that the mom will know what to do all right we cut to dark and i guess a high-rise building in springdale and then we've got sexy lady showing up who we've seen before in the zero issue and maybe even the beginning of this she says that his presence is only going to cause more trouble. So this is Bahare, which we, we met before. Her clothes are a little more fancy here. She's got a Black Panther, so it's pretty cool. They talk back and forth evil villain stuff, as evil villains will do. There's always a little bit of a power struggle between the baddies. And anyway, we get to see one more shot of Crow Quill. Uh, he should be reverting back to his predator form within hours. He'll be an easy target then, mentally as well as physically. Uh, so, um, because of his blood loss, um, that he'll be reverting back to his predator form within hours. He'll be an easy target then. Hold on. Kill Crow has been successful to an extent. The tenth surely suffered a severe loss of blood with Kill Crow's minions. He should be reverting back to his predator form within hours. He'll be an easy target then, mentally as well as physically. Okay, I get it. Like, like his loss of blood will, will cease. Anyway, and then this is a shot of Black Spell. And it's a little tricky to... Um, I mean, it's it's basically they're cutting to, like, somewhere else. I think because Paul Mounce's colors are so vibrant everywhere, it's a little... I mean, this is lit a little bit different than the rest of the stuff, but it, it, it maybe doesn't feel enough removed that we know it's a different place. He could have used slightly more muted colors. But anyway, Black Spell is basically interrogating the, the mom here. It says it, but I think visually it should say it, too. Um, um, and then they, they're talking about using black spell to interrogate someone as like using a bazooka to kill a cockroach. So this dude goes way overboard, um, which is not good for, um, Dr. Fine. Uh, and anyway, the tent shall be contained. I took his weapons. I took his skills. I will now take him. It shows this shot of the tenth, but... Unless this is a different character. Hold on, let me think for a second. Is this? No. Uh, hold on. I've not come this far in my operation only to be brought down by that which I created. The tenth shall be contained. He is now only a mere shell of his former self. I guess this is his former self. I took his weapons. And da 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 da. Then we're going to cut back to the car. All right. So they tried to call the mom. There's no answer. I don't know if that's symbolic of that. Anyway, but this dude's like still in the back of the car. But he starts to actually heal as he's healing. He does touch his wrist, but he doesn't have the um those canisters on his wrist. So I'm not sure. But anyway, he starts to awaken and um. 
they're heading to uh, try to find her mom. So, like I said, we've got a little letter from Tony. It's nice, nice little read. There he is. Thank you sincerely, Tony Daniel. Awesome. And we get this cool thing. Always the cool bonuses in the image books. Love it. So we've got a little breakdown of who the 10th is. And you can see this guy here now a little bit better. Different lips, though. The thing is, is he didn't draw the upper lip. The one that he did before, he actually, like, took lines and made his lips, like, these kind of lips. Um, and so it read more like a feminine um, face. But got Raz's dark. Zarina Fine. Okay, so that is, that is um, the daughter of the doctor. I thought that was... Esperanza del Toro, Killcrow, Baharan, Baharen, Bahare, the aggressor, and then they don't um, get into the black, black spell or whatever his name was. And we saw that, and then we got a pinup from Tony, like a little painted piece. So always experimental with his art, but again, I like I said, I really really like this as far as like a popcorn movie image comic. I thought it, it hit all the notes that I want in it. Had some likable characters, had some, you know, nice classic image style villains, had like the cool monster. It was really fun. Really really fun. So I'm I'm gonna give this one like five stars. I, I really enjoyed it, you know. So all right, I'm gonna read a hundred bullets. I got all kinds of stuff to do today. It's going to be a busy day. I'm really enjoying reading all of your suggestions. So keep them coming, you know. I, I would prefer to do number one issues. But if if um, if you think that there's an issue that's in a series, I mean, I can check it out. I don't know how well I'll be able to fall through. I was reading some X-Men yesterday from um, the transition from Dave Cockrum to John Byrne. And uh, it's like, I don't know the X-Men that well to just hop into the middle of stories but it was okay it went all right i read i read the marvel team ups which was john burns first x-men drawing that he did the first time that he drew the x-men is in marvel team ups i think it was 53 or 57 one of those two issues it's a hulk story um and uh the x-men are in it x-men and spider-man it was good it was, it was good. I liked, in some ways, I liked the story, even though it's, I had to really shift gears to read it. It was a very different form of writing than the stuff I had been reading. So I had to kind of like, had to recalibrate my brain to be reading like old Marvel stuff. And then Chris Claremont's like completely different. So that was, that was a shift too. So, you know. Different writers phrase things differently. I remember years ago, it's funny, and then I'll end this video. I remember years ago, though, trying to read Chris Claremont. Not when I say years, I'm talking like 20 years ago. I found this, the way that he phrases things was very, very clunky to the way that I read. I don't know why that was, but I definitely remember reading it and going like, man, his sen the way that he structures sentences is really, really not how I would say stuff. So I would always get hung up on his words and like the, the way that it was, it was really interesting. And I'd, I'd never really noticed that with a writer before, but yeah, Claremont and the way that I read didn't sync up, but eh, that was a long time ago. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.